It's pretty hard to talk about the Middle East as one place anymore because it is so many countries that are broken down overall. So you're seeing Dubai, UAE, really growing new resorts, exciting things happening there. Um, travel to Egypt is beginning to come back, which is great to see. Um, I actually visited there a number of years ago, and it was really sad to see the blow that tourism had taken in that amazing country too. So hopefully that more stability there will lead to more travel. And I think what you're going to continue to see though is diversification of brands. You're going to see more and more unique resorts, unique luxury properties and mainstream properties opening up across the region to appeal to all price points and kind of demographics too. So um, that's really encouraging too because when you can see an economy diversify again from luxury to mainstream has a much more kind of even keel for the long term. Walk me through the brand strategy that you guys have been developing. You know, brands are at the heart of what we do. Effectively, we have 5,200 hotels around the world and, and a number of brands that we've been adding recent years, but we actually don't own many hotels anymore. We're all about building great brands that have great provenance and history. You know, we've just launched a trends report this week talking about the power of provenance. And so we're here in the Intercontinental in Davos, a brand that has over 70 years of history and heritage and trust, which is what really underpins building great brands. Um, Intercontinental has hosted events like this around the world for, again, over seven decades. And so that's what we focus on, making sure that we can take our brands, whether it's Holiday Inn with over 50, almost 60 years of heritage, and launch those into markets where we can get scale, and also understand whether there are unique opportunities to launch new brands. So we built brands just for China. We're launching a new brand, Avid Hotels, in the U.S. too. So it's about having a brand portfolio that appeals to a diverse group of travelers, but it has to be underpinned by trust, which is more important today than anything else. And following on to that, really the main disruptor in, in the hotel space in recent years, of course, has been the, the likes of Airbnb, for example. A couple of years ago, we talked about this here at Davos uh, with the former CEO, and he was telling me that you know there were a lot of questions about how this would impact the industry. How's it touching your bottom line today? You know, everyone thought it was going to be an existential threat to the hotel industry. And what's interesting, though, home sharing has been around as long, if not longer, than hotels. So it fundamentally hasn't had a material impact on the hotel industry. There are certain markets where there's quite a proliferation of home sharing, where it has had an impact on those markets. And you're seeing governments react to that through regulation, trying to protect housing prices from going up, making sure safety security is done. So overall, it really hasn't had a material impact on us, though, but it's something that we as an industry are very focused on because we want to make sure that if that industry matures, it plays by the same rules as the hotel industry. It pays its fair share of taxes. It's providing safe accommodations to customers. And you feel like governments globally are starting to pay attention to that. You're definitely seeing that happen more and more. You're seeing cities, without question, focus on regulation because you're seeing what was once somebody sharing an apartment every now and then turn into small businesses. And that was never the real intent for when that was happening. And so you're seeing local city councils and local governments regulate against that, which is a real positive for the industry, but it's also positive for consumers because it provides safety and security. And finally, I have to ask you about Brexit. Is it a double-edged sword? Because essentially what we've seen over the last several months in particular, a rise in the amount of people who are coming and you know, partaking of tourism in the UK. But does it really impact your business in a negative way as well? We're a global company um, in 100 countries and territories. Only about 5% of our business is from the UK. And, and what's been surprising, you noted, was the impact of Brexit on us has been to drive the value of the pound down, which has made the UK really on sale. And so we've seen increase in tourism, which has benefited our business. And plus being a global company with um, a cost base in, in dollars, again, that helps us out as well too. So it's actually been a net positive probably for our business overall. But we do hope that Brexit does get resolved in a really clear manner because uncertainty is never good for business. And finally, I have to ask you as well, in terms of the Davos uh, themes for what's going to happen over the next year or so, what are going to be the, the big challenges to your industry in the coming days? You know, I think it's the, the role of a business in society. I think that's when we talk about this week in WEF. You're talking about the fractured relationships that are going on, the lack of trust in government, the lack of trust in businesses. And so I think the focus for us is to making sure that our customers really can trust in us, trust in our brands, trust in IHG, and understand when they're with us that we're out looking after them. Because that really is a pain point you're seeing in business today where Customers don't know which companies to trust um, and really having a real kind of um, disassociation with their faith in government too. So I think you'll see that theme throughout Davos this week, something that we're very, very focused on as a company. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.